I hopefully there's no stupid questions. So there, there are no stupid. I'm questions. wondering uh, how do you wrestle with uh, infinity? For example, it seems like all your your thinking and what laws what it has to do with a, a finite amount of matter. You were talking about multi universe yeah, sure. stuff. But in my head, there's just one universe with all those multiples. Well, in, in a flat universe, it's infinite in spatial extent, right? Uh -huh. Infinity is a really hard thing to wrestle with. Yes. And in fact. Um, let me give you, I wrote, in one of my books I wrote about infinity because it's so fascinating and so weird. The only way you can wrestle with infinity is unfortunately the way we physicists wrestle with many things, mathematically. And fortunately or unfortunately, mathematics is the language of nature. And therefore, every time I give a talk or write a book, I have to lie a little bit because I put it in words. The real explanation is mathematical. But infinity is so strange, you don't have any idea how strange it is. So let me make it clear to you how little you understand infinity. Okay. No problem. I'll, I'll, I'll use the example of a very famous mathematician called uh, Hilbert, very probably the most famous mathematician in the early part of the century. He almost discovered general relativity before Einstein. Hilbert gave an example. We call it Hilbert's Hotel, and I like to use it. So let's say you go to Las Vegas, and there's an infinitely big hotel. Okay, and you go in, and 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 you go in and say, I want a room. And the clerk says, Well, all the rooms are occupied. You say, okay, I'll leave. He said, no, 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 I can, I can, it's okay, I can handle that. Here, let me just move the person from room number one into room number two. The room number two into room number three. Room number three into room number four, and so on. Now all the other rooms are occupied, but room number one is empty. Okay? Mm -hmm. That seems a little strange, but let's take, let's say you have a Catholic family that's infinitely big. <laughs> and you go to the hotel and say, I've got my infinite number of children here, I want to check in. He says, well, the rooms are occupied. And you go, oh, okay. And he, no, no, he, oh, I, can, I can handle that. I can handle your infinite family. Even though I'm fully booked, I have an infinitely big hotel. I move someone from room number one into room number two, room number two into room number four, room number three into room number six, and so on. And now only the even numbers are occupied. And all the odd numbered rooms are empty, so you have an infinite number of those. So you see, infinity working with infinities is really weird because adding and subtracting infinities produces strange things. And unfortunately, in physics, we have to learn how to deal with that. The universe may be infinite. And there are many strange things. One of the most ridiculous, unfortunately, which I go to physics conferences, I was just in one in France, and this was talked about, is if the universe is infinite and infinitely long, old, then there's a puzzle. We're here because we evolved. But that makes us very special, apparently. Because if the universe is infinitely big and infinitely old, quantum fluctuations will produce this room with all the people in it, having all the, having everything is exactly the same, yeah. an infinite number of times. Exactly. So we should be in this room, and I know it seems like it's taking an infinitely long amount of time, <laughs> but we, we should be in this room, but most of the time, we should never have evolved. But we evolved. And that's caused some physicists to worry. I think it's a ridiculous worry, frankly, because in fact, I, mean, I hate to do this. I'll answer your questions in private later, but exactly because I, I want to let yeah. people, you know, go pee and stuff before the next thing. But let me just say to close, because probably this is the most important moral of infinity, yeah. and it comes from Richard Feynman, who I've just written a book about. Richard Feynman used to go up to people all the time, and he'd say, "You won't believe what happened to me today. You, you won't believe what happened to me." And people say, "What?" He'd say, "Absolutely nothing." <laughs> Because we humans believe that everything that happens to us is special and significant. And that, and Carl Sagan wrote beautifully about that in Demon Haunted World, that is much of the source of religion. Okay? We, everything that happens is unusual and unexpected. The likelihood that Richard and I ever would have met, if you think about all the variables, the probability that we were in the same place at the same time, ate breakfast at the same, whatever, if you apply, it's zero. Okay? Every event that happens has small probability, but it happens. And then when it happens, if it's weird, if you dream one million nights and it's nonsense, but one night you dream that your friend is going to break his leg and the next day he breaks his arm, you think, <laughs> ah. Okay? So the really thing that, that the, the physics tells us about the universe is it's big. Rare events happen all the time, including life. And that doesn't mean it's special. Thank you very much.